Good morning and welcome to another episode of Drew's Book Reviews. So today's book, we're going to be talking about The 100 Rebellion by Cass Morgan. This is the fourth book in the 100 book series. So if you have not read the series or don't really know what it's about or haven't even heard of the TV show that is based off of this book series, the whole concept is futuristic society, post-apocalyptic world. Mankind is relegated to a orbiting spaceship. Uh, for the past 300 years, waiting for the Earth to heal from atomic nuclear winter. A hundred juvenile delinquents are sent down to Earth to see if Earth is ready to support human life again. But not everybody left Earth. Uh, so this is the final book in the series uh, of the 100. So one of the highlights from this uh, book is the reunition of reunion of Clark and her parents. Now they kind of were reunited at the towards the end of the last book. Uh, she thought her parents were dead. They had been floated, which is the term used to describe being ejected from the space station into the vacuum of space without protection is kind of a death penalty form of execution, essentially. Um, so she had been reunited with her parents and they're kind of getting to know each other again, so to speak. Um, you know, it's peaceful now. Both the Earthborns and the 100 and the colonists are living together peacefully. Everyone seems to be happy. And getting the chance to rebuild society, essentially. Um, however, what happens here is their village is raided. They have people taken captive. Housing is destroyed. Their supplies are raided and stolen. Their their food and their weapons and all that kind of stuff is all stolen. And some of the some of the colony or some of the people in the new village that's being built have been taken captive by this cult of earth worshippers. Uh, and really kind of definitely demonstrates it being a cult, this idea of worshipping the earth, and that the earth has not forgiven mankind for the terrible atrocities that brought about the apocalypse and the nuclear winter itself. And, and that mankind needs to work hard to be forgiven for this before they're allowed to once again till and plow the land. And so this cult has this mentality that uh, they are not allowed to do so because the earth, their god, does not allow it. So the captives are basically being forced into servitude uh, and forced to kind of join this cult to become brainwashed by it. So, of course, we have Clark and Bellamy and a few others all have to stage a rescue uh, for those that have been kidnapped and taken against their will. Overall, I mean, I think it's a great story. I, I certainly enjoyed the 100 Rebellion, but i got to be honest, I really didn't feel like it fit into the whole 100 book story or 100 book series story itself. The first three, um, the 100 Day 21 Homecoming, that had a whole story arc behind it. Uh, the initial being sent to Earth, day 21, you know, showing that the Earth was survivable because by day 21, they'd be demonstrating some kind of uh, sickness from the radiation if it were at extreme levels, but kind of tying that into the Earthborn and then homecoming when the rest of the colony comes down and they all have to figure out how to live together happily ever after, so to speak. I think those three books alone had a great story arc it went well and wrapped up that story arc uh quite quite well the 100 rebellion however just didn't seem to fit in with the greater story arc of the first three uh, i think it could work very well as a standalone novel in fact uh, i really don't feel like you need to read the first three to really be able to read this one as a standalone and kind of know what's going on it just kind of seems like an add-on to the end um, which, I mean, like I said, the book itself isn't a bad book, but it just doesn't seem to fit into the greater story of the 100 as far as the overall story arc goes. Uh, and uh, those are just some of my thoughts on the 100 Rebellion. I certainly enjoyed it. Uh, overall, like I said, a good story, but just it's a great standalone. I mean, you don't need to read the other three to really understand what's happening in this one. Uh, and it's a great standalone story but definitely does not seem to fit into the greater story arc of the original three. So and one of the other aspects of this series that I, I really liked was the way in which it treated uh, LGBTQ characters within the book. Uh, I've read some books where 
they've really kind of harped on the idea that the character's gay and they just obsessed over this uh, and constantly I like how it was treated uh, within this book series and within these books basically as just normal part of everyday life it, it wasn't treated any differently it wasn't seen as uh, outside the ordinary uh, and it was just as if it were normal as normal as Bellamy and Clark being a couple and and definitely treated that with with the same treatment as anybody else any other characters any other type of relationship and I just I really like that aspect of it and I thought that was really well done and I really appreciated that because uh, I, I think that is the best way to handle it and I think that really helps to uh, normalize that in the eyes of the reader and I think that's what makes it good versus harping on it all the time so anyway as always those are my thoughts. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time on the next episode of Drew's Book Reviews. Have a great day.